Friday column from Tom Kern, written while events were unfolding regarding the solicitation of prostitution charges against Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Tom says, did it, didn't do it, who knows right now. The bottom line is the country's most recognizable 77-year-old multi-billionaire was, at the very least, at the wrong place at the wrong time. And you know what? Even if he just stopped in to ask directions and gave somebody $20 for their assistance, nobody's really going to care or remember. That's... Again, our good buddy Tom Kern joining us from Puerto Rico by phone. Tom, what are you doing in Puerto Rico? I'm glad you asked. The uh, McCordys, Devin and Jason McCordy, are on a goodwill tour that the folks here in Puerto Rico asked them to come down. And then they said, if you want to bring somebody in the media, bring them too. Um, they're rebuilding from Hurricane Maria, and they wanted to send out the message um, that they are open for business. I've been staying at the Intercontinental San Juan. The boys did a... Uh, a clinic over the weekend at the Roberto Clemente Sports City for kids in Puerto They play a lot of football down here. Believe it or not, there were 26 teams playing American football Saturday um, in February in the heat. Um, and the fellows were over there, and they, they observed. They ran a clinic afterwards. So it's been a good weekend. And, and really, the island has rebounded nicely. So if Thank you for giving me the chance to get that message out there for these people because it's a, it's a hell of a place. These people are real nice. And, you know, an item of news that kind of got superseded by everything that happened on Friday, Devin McCourty making it clear on Thursday that he is going to come back. That's big for the Patriots, and Jason McCourty wants to stay with the Patriots. But when you consider how they played last year, the play that Jason McCourty made in Super Bowl 53, if, if those two guys stay with the Patriots, that's very good from a football standpoint. A hundred percent. And the interesting thing is Jason's a free agent. The way he played will certainly, you know, create a little bit of buzz around him. He did say his first choice is to stay here, but I think also it is a business. You're not going to play for, as Ty Law used to say, I'm not going to come up there and play for a nickel, Bill. Um, so <laughs> he could certainly have offers elsewhere and, and it might have to be a decision for him if the Patriots do say, yeah, we know you want to stay here, so we're going to love about you. Give me your reaction when you first saw the news on Friday. I had to, like, refocus my eyes three or four times because I thought, wait a minute, what is this? Is this a joke? Is somebody trying to be funny? And then I realized this is real. The The news that Robert Kraft was charged with two counts of soliciting prostitution in Florida. Your thoughts when you first saw it and when you first realized that, that it was real, that it had happened? My first inclination was, what what are you doing? I mean, I understand to a degree keeping it young and staying vibrant and alive. You know, I mean, he's, he's at the Oscars over the weekend, but there are times when Robert is out there a little too much. I mean, he was dancing with Cardi B at the Super Bowl, and it's fun, and it's, but there are times when I say, is that really age appropriate? And where was someone in his entourage, whether it be a security person? I mean, I'm sure he's not unaccompanied when he's in, in West Palm Beach. There's probably someone with him to say, this really is a horrible idea, um, Mr. Kraft. So that, that to me was my reaction because there is so much at stake. There's so much at stake when you're a person like that. And he is a good person, um, but you certainly see the moral high ground on a lot of issues, you certainly are going to see some ability to have people listen to what you say when you have something that's an embarrassing event. And, and again, it's not something that rises to the level and, you know, we'll let it play out and certainly not a non-serious situation, especially um, when we find out what the women involved in that particular establishment, what the, what they were under whether they were there voluntarily or not, but you know, it just doesn't make any sense to you. But the other interesting thing, Mike, too, is covering this team over the course of time, for whatever reason, the number of things that happen here, you're never really surprised either when something completely off the radar emerges. You say, oh, well, this will be something we'll be covering for the next few months. Well, and, and here's the thing. Right. There's been a categorical denial issued by the Patriots on behalf of Robert Kraft. And and if, for now, it is simply a charge. And 
if he wants to, he could fight this thing tooth and nail. I mean, he could put together a team of lawyers that 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 tears the thing apart, that ultimately gets an exoneration if he really wants to spend the time and the money necessary to do it. Do we know at this point, other than that categorical denial, will this be something that quietly gets resolved, or will he fight and spend and do everything he has to do to prove that he didn't do it? As of Friday and throughout the weekend, the legal team has been assembled, and they're trying to figure out exactly what they'll do. Now, the legal system down there, the police and the people running the operation said that they do have video, so it's going to make it a hell of a lot more difficult for him to say, yeah, it wasn't me, if there's video of him not only entering but also having any kinds of activities while he's in there. So their hope was that this would perhaps be able to be dismissed. Um, and that was their hope on Friday that, you know, it could quietly go away. But if there's video, I think it'll make it a hell of a lot more difficult, especially if you run a sting, 25 other individuals are involved and the most high profile one has his charges dismissed after um, the police chief says we have video. So they've, almost got to follow through as much as they can down in West Palm Beach, Jupiter. And if there is any legal responsibility ultimately imposed on Robert Kraft, the commissioner of the NFL, Roger Goodell, will have to do something. We've seen Jim Irsay get suspended for operating a vehicle while under the influence and also fined $500,000. Now, for some teams, the suspension of an owner would matter. Does the suspe- if, if Robert Kraft eventually is suspended, and Ursay was suspended six games to start the season a few years ago, if, if, if Robert Kraft gets suspended six games to start the season, if that's how this plays out, does that have any impact whatsoever on the team? On the way it plays on the field, I don't think it has. I don't think it will register at all. I don't think it would register really even in the upper reaches. I mean, certainly – He's an impactful guy. He's an important guy, and he's involved still. Jonathan, of course, is involved as well. But the football is run by Bill Belichick and Nick Casario. And, you know, I spoke to the McCordys about this as well, and they said they're so – Bill is so adept at focusing players on, look, that's not your job. It's not your job to comment on something that doesn't involve you. Those – whoever's involved in it will have it resolve itself. I mean, we can go back through the annals from – Josh Gordon this past year to the Flake Gate to Julian Edelman's suspension to the unbelievable controversy or, and tragedy of the Aaron Hernandez situation to Teddy Bruschi's stroke, I mean, to Spygate. Um, this team navigates those things because they ignore them. They don't ignore them when they're off the field. But when it comes time to go into the office, people aren't sitting around the water cooler and talking about, can you believe what happened with Mr. Kraft? And, you know, that, that, that's a great point. The, the, the thing that Bill Belichick has done better than any coach really in NFL history, and especially modern history, where there are so many potential distractions, disruptions, and, and things that can take away from what you're trying to get your team to do, which is focus on the task at hand. Belichick has been able to keep his team focused on what's in front and forget anything else that's going on around the team, anything else that's happened in the past, anything else that may be irrelevant to football. Focus on what you need to do next. And if there's any team out there that is best suited to just shrug at something like this, it is the Patriots. It's bizarre. I mean, you were talking as we read into it about Antonio Brown. I said, I was going to ask me about Antonio Brown. And that's the interesting thing because every fiber of me says they wouldn't want Antonio Brown. Why would they want him? And of course, Pittsburgh's resistant to the idea of trading him here. But how many times over the course of the years has the most spoken about player available ended up being signed by the Patriots, whether it's, you know, Ocho Cinco or Albert Hainsworth or Tim Tebow, um, Randy Moss, over the course of time, they, they do make the splash signings that make you go, they're really going to sign him? And then more often than not, not always, but more often than not, it works out pretty well. Do you think they will make a play for Antonio Brown? I don't, because he wants that new money. And that's why I think, too, the Odell Beckham situation is so difficult for me to wrap my mind around, too, because of the money that he is making. I mean, 
Bill Belichick has looked at wide receivers over the course of time as being interchangeable type players. Even when Randy Moss was here, he had to fight for the extension that he got and eventually that's what drove him out of town as he felt he was underpaid relative to what he brought to the team. They don't pay for wide receivers. They don't look at them necessarily as totally interchangeable, but the array of skills that outside receivers bring that cause them to make the money they do are not as highly valued in New England. Look, they cut loose Brandon Cooks, who was a 1,000-yard, 73-catch guy for them, and they had no real replacement in house for him in 2018, and mainly because they had to pay him eight million dollars and have have him be a free agent at the end of the year. So that's why I have a hard time thinking about Antonio Brown or Odell Beckham being signed here. But if you could get Odell Beckham Jr. for less than twelve million dollars a year over five years, if you could do that, if you could inherit the remaining contract because the Giants paid him twenty million out of the gates, it's under sixty mm-hmm. million for the final five years. That's not a bad deal for Odell Beckham Jr. if you could get that. And it's a great point. What it also brings into focus, though, is someone like Rob Gronkowski. So Gronk is working on a deal now that was great at the beginning, sucks now. And as a result, if you bring Odell Beckham in at $12 million a year and Gronk is making nine, it's just going to agitate him even further. (laughs) So whether or not he comes back, and I have a, a greater feeling that he might be back than I did, you know, toward the end of the season. But there's your pay structure in New England that's out of whack. You're going to pay Odell Beckham $12 million and Julian Edelman four or five. Um, that, to me, it's, for the Patriots over the course of time to get players to swallow the pay structure that is out of whack at times for them when other guys on the team are making more money. Like Dwayne Allen's making $6 million. That's more than Julian Edelman makes. Um so it's, that would be another thing that they would have to conquer if they did bring a player in like that. All right, Tom. Hey, I got to run, buddy. Appreciate some of your time. Travel safe, right, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. There he is, Tom Curran, NBC Sports Boston. And, you know, I think it may make sense to link Gronk to OBJ because if Gronk is gone, maybe you would be more inclined to revisit the effort to try to get Odo Beckham Jr., something the Patriots did last year, according to our own Chris Sims, who will be joining us later this week in Indianapolis. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.